All right, welcome back to the last section in this unit. We're going to be talking about explicit formulas for sequences. And today it's starring Mr. Bean as the rash, the right, the fastest algebra out there. Take a look at this. Well, hello, I am Mr. Bean. I mean, I am the rash. I am super fast. Look at me sprint all the way down here so fast, and I can do it backwards. Look at this, sprinting all the way back here. Anyway, I'm going to show you all about explicit formulas today because, once again, I am the rash, the fastest algebra in the world. All right, so let's take a look here. Number one, uh, I have 18, 22, 26, and 30. Those are the first terms in my sequence. So is this arithmetic or geometric? Well, let's remember, if it's arithmetic, I'm increasing by adding each time. So this looks like it's going up four each time, doesn't it? So this is going to be arithmetic. If I was multiplying each time, it'd be ge geometric. But since I'm adding, it's arithmetic. That's why it's arithmetic. What's the hundredth term? Whoa. The hundredth term. Let's see. Well, maybe we should make a table, right? The first term is 18. The second term is 22. The third term is 26. And the fourth term is 30. What I want you to do right now is pause the video and see if you can come up with the hundredth term. All right. First of all, I know some of you aren't pausing the video. All right. You should really try this. All right. Let's take a look at this. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to try and come up with a faster way. I could add four over and over and over again, but chances are I'm going to make a mistake. So what I'm going to try and do is come up with a formula, and I'm going to start here. I know that I got to this one by doing 18 and adding four. Right? And see, that's there. 18 add 4. And this one I added 4 plus 4. So I added 18 plus 4 times 2. Ooh. All right. And to get to here, I added 4 plus 4 plus 4. So this is 18 plus 4 times 3. So really, this is 4 times 1, right? How could we get this one? It'd be 18 plus 4 times 0. So now, if you remember, let's label these. This might help us a little bit. Let's look. What's the one thing? We want the hundredth term, right? So if we want the hundredth term, let's see. I have 18 is the same all the time. And then at 4 is the same all the time. And I multiplied it by this number here changes. So how can we relate this? When I was at step 1, I was at 0. When I was at step 2, I was at 1. When I was at step 3, I was at 2. Ah, it's always 1 less. So I could do 100 minus 1, or 99, and then I would get my answer, right? So the first thing I would do is multiply 4 times 99. Probably can't do that in your head, so I'm going to use a calculator. So I have 396, and I'm going to add my 18 to that, and then we'll get 414. All right? Now, could you have done it? and counted them all out, you sure could have, right? But I think this is going to be an easier way, especially for bigger numbers. And in fact, that pattern is going to hold. See, this is called an explicit formula. An explicit formula is a formula that generates any term in the sequence. So if I want to know the hundredth term, I can get the hundredth term. If I want the two hundredth, I can get the two hundredth. In fact, I'm going to use it and find the nth term. That's finding the formula. And in general, our formula is this right here. Whatever answer we want is going to be the first plus the common difference, what we add by, times the step number minus 1. So remember, n is the step number, the term number, minus 1, and d is our common difference. So our initial value like we had our initial value is 18 on the last one. Then we had D times N minus 1. N minus 1 in this case was what? Um, oh, excuse me. D was what? D was 4. All right. And then N minus 1, boom. And that will give us any step we want. And we could even check it out. We could even simplify that. 18 plus 4n minus 4 
18 minus 4 is 14 plus 4n, and now we have it in slope-intercept form, don't we? All right? For now, I'm just going to have you get it to this step right here each time. Okay? All right, so now we have a new sequence, 4, 12, 36, and 108. So is this arithmetic or geometric, and how do we know? Well, I could add 8, add 8, nope. Let's see, 4 times 3, 12 times 3, and guess what? 36 times 3 is 108. So when I repeatedly multiply, that means we are going to have a geometric sequence, right? All right, now what is the 10th term of the sequence? Whew. 10's not as terrible, but let's see if we can find a faster way. I think you could probably figure this one out with fi without finding a formula, but let's find one anyway, all right? So our first one is 4. Our second one was 12, which was 4 times 3, right? And then this one was 36, which was 4 times 3 times 3. And then this was 108, which was 4 times 3 times 3 times 3. All right, now, which would make this what? 4 times, well, hmm, something's going to be there if we got a formula. So let's check this out. What's another way to write repeated multiplication? Repeated multiplication is the same thing as an exponent. So this is 3 to the 3rd, all right? 3 to the 3rd is 27 times 4 is 108. Let's try this one. This would be 4 times 3 to the, I have two of them, 2nd. So 3 to the 2nd is 9. 9 times 4 is 36. This would be 4 times 3 to the 1st. And if the pattern continued, 3, 2, 1, this would be 3 to the 0. And if you remember from last year, anything to the 0 power is 1. So 1 times 4, and we have it. So if we want to find the 10th term, let's figure it out. It's going to be 4 times 3. We just need to figure out how many we had here, right? So if we relate it, 4 and 3, it's 1 less. 3 and 2, 1 less. 2 and 1, 1 less. It's always 1 less. If I have 10, it's going to be to the ninth. All right? In your calculator, if you don't know how to do exponents, there's this caret button, and it's right next underneath the clear button. So you're going to go and put that in your calculator, 4 caret 9, and that will give it to you. All right? And in fact, most of your calculators, once you put that, you're going to see that it'll actually write 3 to the ninth power. Okay? So what is 4 times 3 to the ninth power? We get our 10th term, which is 78,732. Okay? What's an explicit formula for this? So what do we have here? 4 times 3. So let's call this A sub N. We had 4 times 3. Now we need something up here. This changed, right? 3, 2, 4, 1. If this was... It was always one less. So let's say it's one less. If it's n, what's one less than n? n minus one. So that would be our explicit formula. And I'll get us to any number we want. Because it's exponents, they're going to go up really quick, though. All right? So take a look. Here's the general form for geometric explicit formula. So if you know it's geometric, this will always work. It's going to be our first term, right? Our first term in this case was 4. Our common ratio, r is the common ratio, what it's being multiplied by. In this case, it was 3 to the n minus 1. And there you have it. All right. All right, here's our next example. Let's take a look and see what we have. Um, am I multiplying 100 by something to get to 83? No. This looks like I'm going down 17. Doesn't it? So it looks like this is minus 17, 83 minus 17, 66 minus 17, right? All right, so this is going to be arithmetic because remember, subtracting is the same thing as adding a negative 17. So since I'm repeatedly adding the same number, it's arithmetic. So what is the explicit formula? So let's take a look here. If I want a sub n, I want to do the first answer plus our common difference times n minus 1. So what is our first answer? Our first answer is 100. 
Our common difference is negative 17. So I'm going to put minus 17 here. You could also put plus a negative 17 times n minus 1. And right there you have your explicit formula for this arithmetic sequence. What's the 34th term? We're going to plug in 34. So a of 34, our 34th term will be 100 minus 17 times 34 minus 1 is 33. 100 17 times 33 is 561. So our 34th term will be negative 461. Boom. Describe what the graph will look like using complete census. So let's just take a look here. Started at 100, right? Then it went 17 down, it went 17 down, it went 17 down, 17 down, 17 down, right? So if we were to describe that um, using complete census, what would be the best way to describe it? Well, uh, it's going to form a line that starts, uh, let's see, that decreases, goes down as it goes to the right. All right, there we have it. Let's take a next look at one. Ooh, now we're going to start with a graph. I love starting with a graph. All right, so if we have a, have our graph, let's first of all, right now, look at it. Is it going to be arithmetic or geometric? So we know if it forms a straight line, it's arithmetic. This is increasing. The gap between is increasing each time. That means it's going to be exponential, right? Since it's exponential, it's going to be geometric. It is a geometric sequence because it forms an exponential curve. All right, so what's the explicit formula? Ah, this might be easier if we start out and actually look at our numbers. So uh, first one would be our first term. Our answer is ooh, between 1 and 0, so that's a half. Our second one is at 1. Our third one is at... 2. Our fourth one is at 4. Let's see. See, now I know a lot of you don't like halves, so I'm not going to skip that one. From 1 to 2, what do I do? I'm multiplying by 2, right? From 2 to 4, I'm multiplying by 2. And our fifth one is 8, so 4 times 2. So I'm multiplying by 2. So my common ratio here is 2. What is my first answer? My first answer is a half. So our formula would be a sub n equals one half times our common difference of two, all of that to the power of n minus one. All right, so pause the video, you try this next one. All right, so is this sequence geometric or arithmetic? I found out that I repeatedly had to multiply by four, so that means it is geometric, all right? It's gonna be geometric because it repeatedly be, is being multiplied from one term to the next, all right? What is the explicit formula? So if we look at it, our common ratio is 4. Our initial value is 5. That's what I wrote over here. Our first answer is 5. Our common ratio is 4. So B of N equals 5 times 4 to the N minus 1. And it's really important for you to understand this exponent only goes with the 4. And I have to do the exponent before I multiply. All right? And let's look at our last one. What's the graph going to look like? Well, we start out low, we go a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. And by now, you should certainly know that if it's exponential, that means it's geometric. So this graph will form an exponential curve that goes up and to the right. All right. Have a great day. Good luck on the mastery check. And don't forget, be the change.